connection between the high level of powers in my country and the younger generation inside and outside the island. And somehow that was what led me into finding a channel of expression. As you added, I, I didn't want to wait, nor six months, not six years more, in order to get my own uh, literature, which was censored in Cuba, uh, put into the open audience. And I found that now I much more, let's say, when I published my books in Cuba, uh, I could go to another city of Cuba to come away, Santiago de Cuba, and nobody knew me there. I was, uh, I was being publishing things and winning contests, but as the distribution is always limited, nobody knew me there. And as a writer, I wanted to be known. And now with the blog and, and this phenomenon, I, I have been receiving commentary from any, anywhere. I mean, it could be from Australia, from America, from... And I found it very exciting. So I want to transmit that uh, in the middle of repression, in the middle of uh, stigmatization, in the middle of a follow-up that includes monitoring and listening to the mobile conversation, I have had some experiences with that. Uh, and during arrest, I have been several times arrested without charges, only as a prophylactic way of letting me know that at some point uh, there will be no no point. There will be a point of no return. That means I could be put into a trial, and a trial in Cuba would mean jail. There is no possibility of a a real defense. On the, in the middle of all this uh, pressure, I try to, to send you a message of, of joy. I mean, I have been enjoying making my blog, uh, making a lot of irony, a lot of provocations. We are not angelic, we are really pro agent of provocation. But in the sense of trying to create a more inclusive society, a more plural society, a more colorful society, in the middle of a bureaucratic, old-fashioned, cold war state, which is black and white against, to work, uh, or in favor. Uh, besides, in my blog I have given voice to many other sectors of the Cuban society which uh, do not have the possibility, like, like almost the whole society. You know? We have only a couple of newspapers, a couple of channels, they all belong to the state, they all belong to the Communist Party. Uh, I, I have nothing against communists, I, all of my friends are communists, but what happens, <laughs> what happens when the Communist Party uh, does not allow the sub-communist person to express themselves? Not, not, let's not say liberal, uh, social democracy, or, no, the sub-communist. When you are about to be communist, then you are out of the game. Because really, the Communist Party of my country and the Communist Youth, which is even sad, more sad, the saddest, sadder, because and the youth is always revolutionary, transforming. They really cannot even, I, I like to say this, that they, even they, if, we, if we, I want to create a demonstration to defend Cuban revolution, I wouldn't be allowed. I mean, you always simply, simply they are uh, taking orders from a vertical model of organization that uh, goes through the, all the institutions of my country, including university, We should be uh, more transforming of society, always uh, having new ideas and trying to put them into society. Well, young persons, in, young students in my university, when I studied biochemistry, we couldn't have the possibility to put our opinions, which at that time were absolutely no dissident opinion, but only transforming opinion, and we were repressed with the same uh, strength that now we have been repressed. So it's something that when you get used to that, and when fear goes out of your heart, you one day, by chance, uh, realize that you are absolutely free in the middle of a of the of the of a clocked society which behaves more hypocritically or, or, or which behaves like a like a fake society in which the national illusion for the young people is emigration. So uh, whatever you're doing in Cuba, keep it low level. At some point, something good will appear, and you will be able to travel abroad, remain outside. We have one-fifth of the population outside. I respect them and I love them, but uh, we have two, two chances in this historical uh, opportunity. Uh, forget about that and the nation will be completely like a, an atomization process, or try at least to put together, uh, to wash away all hatred, all resent because of the pain that has been lived, and try to put together the joy, the, the desire to live in a, in a normal society. You know? And so my blogs, I, I will give the voice to Ivani immediately, uh, one is of literature with columns that sometimes take borrow from literature, 
uh, I try to go all the time against the consensus, trying to find extreme position to make some ironic uh, ideas. And the other is simply a photo blog, where there is no words, there are no words, and I just sometimes publish the pictures that the, that the person living abroad asked me, asked me to do. I have received letters from person, very old person, which has never uh, been back to Cuba, and they tell me I want to see the church where I married in the, in the 60s. And then I go there, I make like a photo coverage, and I publish all of it for free, of course, only for the joy of, of making a bridge. So for me, it has been a very exciting uh, experience, and I feel ready to keep doing this, even if we are going to pay a price that in Cuba, and I want to make this clear before finishing, uh, with the new regime of Raul Castro, could be as high as life. We are not, we, are, we don't have a civil war ongoing in Cuba, but famous, uh, important leaders of the dissidents has died in a strange condition, and the the last of this death is being denounced internationally because there is a, a witness living in, in now in Spain, which is declaring that there was harassment and, and provocation of a car crash. So the situation in Cuba. It's not the, that of a civil war, we are not a, in a chaotic situation, but some s s strange things are happening and that comes because of the secrecy policy of our government. That is, uh, not willing at all to establish a national dialogue with the Cubans living in Cuba and the Cubans living outside Cuba. Um, this is somehow the picture. Uh, I will, without, she needs no further introduction, but it's my pleasure for the first time in my life, I think to give the voice to Ioannis Sanchez, which is my colleague, an impression that I, I, a person that I admire very much, and, and a great conversationalist besides. Gracias.